Here we have a 2019 MacBook Pro 8 to 1 for one model that came in for no power. We already disassembled the back cover. I want to take a quick look at this side of the board before we disassemble and work on the motherboard. I always tell Big Boss, do not disassemble yet. Let me look at the board. Maybe it's a problem that we can solve from the surface without having to take the whole motherboard out and wasting time. We have a lot of devices in the queue and we just have to keep moving. Now, if I cannot find the fault from the surface or we have to remove the motherboard, then we'll do it. One thing I want to do first is quick visual inspection. I want to see if there's anything blown, anything corroded, liquid damage. Anything obvious? Maybe the customer opened up the laptop to do something and he knocked off a component by mistake. We see this a lot. And I have a lot of videos showing how visual inspection is really important. A lot of devices, we figure out faults by just doing a visual inspection. It only takes a minute. Usually I go faster than this. But just for the sake of this video, I go a bit slower. I do not see anything obvious on this side of the board. I always look on the corners. Corrosion usually happens on the corrosion, on the corrosion, on the corners, on the edges. Corrosion usually happens on the corrosion. Write it down. One of Northridge Fix's phrases. I do not see anything obvious. So what's next? The next thing I want to do is inspect the board under a thermal camera just to see if there's any signs of power, what's powering on, what's not powering on, and then we'll make a decision from there. Thermal camera on. And what I want to do is point it at the motherboard. We have one fan here. We have another fan right here. And that's the board. One, two, and let's plug in the charging cable. I just want to see if there's anything obvious. And the board looks cold. Oh, wait a minute. We have something hot right here. Or it could be back of the board. We have something hot right here. Wow, we got it. Let me check and see what's going on here. Unplug the cable. Battery is already unplugged. And let's check and see what we have here. So heat could be coming from any one of those caps, if in fact heat is coming from this side of the board. This, 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 or this. We can always narrow it down by using an atomizer. Before we do so, let me just quickly probe those capacitors. I did not pull up any schematics or board view diagrams. But what I want to do is measure short to ground, meter in diode mode. You see, we have a dead short on every single one of them. A dead zero ohm short. Yeah, so everything in this area 
is shorten out. What should we do? We're going to use our atomizer. And if you are in the same type of business or you are doing this as a hobby and you do not already have an atomizer, you can purchase one off our site along with all the tools that we use on our bench here. And that's everything from this amazing microscope, articulating arm, soldering stations, hot air stations, thermal cameras, atomizers, tweezers, original Amtec flux, Braidwick, those amazing multimeter probes. I have a video on those probes, one of the best probes I've ever worked with. Interchangeable tips. Watch the video. Heat resistant cables. And the atomizer looks something like this. All right, so now that we sprayed powdered flux on the board, what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug the charging cable, the USB-C cable, and we're gonna see where flux melts first. We should be able to tell which component is shortened out. Are you ready? One, two, and three. See it? Do you see it? Write it down in the comments. Do you see it? Which one? Start with this one. One, two, three, and four. Which one is it? It's very obvious that the problem is this cap here. You see how flux is melting around that component? Wow. Atomizer to the rescue. We still have flux around this component. We still have flux around this component. We still have flux around this component. But this one here, flux melted. Awesome. So we got it. We are on our way to fixing this laptop. That's how you efficiently and quickly diagnose and fix a device. Efficiency is key in this business. I always mention it. Another person may pull out a circuit diagram, schematics, board view diagram, start measuring for voltages. If that person is a scientist, he may use an oscilloscope, but we do not need to do any of this. In, out, next. No need to use hot air. I cannot use hot air because we did not disassemble the board. I do not want to burn anything on the side, any plastic on top here, or create any damage. So let's keep this cap here, and we can also measure it to confirm that this is the bad guy. If yes, then we have to say hello to the bad guy. I mean, he may escape to the ninth dimension. Look at this. That's 100% the bad guy. 100%. If we go here, we do not have a short anymore. And if we go here, we do not have a short anymore. Okay? That's the bad guy right here. So say hello to the bad guy. The laptop should power on without this cap. I'm going to have to grab this cap from a donor board. We have a lot of them. But for the time being, let me connect the battery and attempt to power this laptop on. Okay, so the cable is in. And some may ask, how would the laptop power on without that component? You have to understand what that component does. It's a bypass capacitor. It's used to filter. 
it does not affect the functionality of the laptop in any way, shape, or form. Unless that component is shortened to ground, then it can disable the laptop and prevent the laptop from powering on. Now, assuming battery is good, we should see an image, or the laptop should power on, right? That's assuming the battery is charged. And since we have nothing, let me plug the charging cable. I do not know if Big Boss disassembled anything else on the board. Yes, I see Fansmith right here. Done. Laptop is fixed. <laughs> Efficiency. In and out. Next. In and out. Next. We're done. I do not want to show you the user's name, but the laptop is on. All right? All we have to do is grab a donor capacitor. I do not know if we have a donor motherboard sitting on the side. If not, then we're going to have to open another donor laptop, a similar one, to get the cap. Or open up the circuit diagram, look at the value of the cap, and we can grab that cap from our capacitor SMD books, which you can also purchase off our site. Now this one here is exactly the same board. I found it, it was the first one on the top. Here. Yeah, it's exactly the same one. So right there, right there. We can grab this cap, solder it on the customer's board, and we're done. But let's say you do not have a donor board. But let's say you don't have a donor board. What can be done? You have to get the schematics and board view diagram for that board. Look up that component on the board view diagram. Let's say that component is labeled C406. You go to the schematics and search for C406, and you will find the value in the schematics. Once you find the value, then you can grab one of our SMD books. Each book has about 8,500 components where you have all values for all resistors, capacitors, from different sizes, size 201, 402, 603, 805, 1206. So five books for resistors and five books for capacitors. You will find all the values in those books. And for this one, we can use our hot air station to remove that component. If anybody knows the value of this capacitor, you have your schematics and board view diagram handy. You can leave it down in the comments, but I do not want to have to go through this right now. I just want to desolder the component, solder it on the customer's board, and I'm out. Last repair for the day. You know what? Before removing this component, let's prep the customer's motherboard so we can remove it from the donor straight to this board here. I do not want to have to put that capacitor on the side and lose that capacitor. Let's use a bigger tip for more heat transfer. And that's what I'm talking about. The bigger the tip, the more heat transfer. I always mention this in our training classes. You have to understand Everything about thermal properties, heat properties, thermal mass, size of the tip, what tips to use. Let's go to our donor board. And the first thing I want to do is measure to make sure that this capacitor is good and not shorting to ground. And the cap is good. Now, if you are a scientist and you would like to know how this cap failed, you can do your thesis on it and let me know. Leave it down in the comments.
But what I can tell you is capacitors fail from the times of the cavemen. It's not something new. Do not press too hard on the tweezer, otherwise the cap is going to fly off to the ninth dimension. The cap is soldered on nicely. We did not use hot air. We did not have to disassemble the motherboard. Work smart and not hard. Let me use the anti-glare light. And that's the image you get with the anti-glare light. One final thing I want to do, we're going to use Chemtech wipes. 91% isopropyl or above. I'm currently using 99% isopropyl and the Northridge Fix brush. You can also purchase Chemtech wipes off our site, all in one go. And we're done. Let's try it one more time. Make sure everything is good. Right, and I do not want to show you the customer's name because we're going to have scientists that would complain, even though it's a name. It's only a name. Doggy Dog. That's the name. Who's Doggy Dog? How dare you show his username? What if I did? What happens? 1-800-DOGGY-DOG and you're going to call him? How does it work? You showed that customer's phone number. What are you going to do with the phone number? You're going to call him? Set up a date with him? I don't know. We're done. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll do something else in the next video.